everyone and welcome to episode 39 of Bucks UK TV. Um, we are audio only this week because we really want to concentrate on the content and we have the content king or should I say queen with us this week. Uh, we are joined by Bucks social media whiz Jill Beckman. Hello. Hello how are you guys doing? Good thank you. It's delightful to have you with us and also with me is Marianne and Alex. Hello. Hi, Hi there. Uh, Marianne and Alex have uh, been all busy all week devising questions to uh, to probe you on every aspect of social media. It's an area close to our heart, not least because we spend all day on it reading everything that you put out, uh, but also because we try and do a little bit ourselves. So we'll come on to that as we go on. But let's um, let's start back at the very beginning, if that's okay. Um, first of all, for everyone listening, usual stuff: hit the like button, subscribe to us, tick the bell, all of that sort of stuff. Really uh, respond to us so that we uh, build a bit of momentum. Momentum. Thanks as usual to Bucks Report for the support that they give us. Um, and at which point then over to Mariana for the first question. So, hi there, Jill. Um, hey. So we like to always get a bit of background on our guests, a bit of, of the history. So we know that you uh, studied media and communications at Penn State University, but what we'd really like to know is kind of obviously, you know, what was it that sort of interested you in that area and obviously the sports side of things were you always a big sports fan did you grow up with sports you know as a sports fan yeah I always was I grew up in New Jersey outside of Philadelphia about half hour outside of Philadelphia and um, I was always a sports fan but when I went into journalism it was more on the news side and then in my second year of college I decided that I wanted to try the sports side of journalism because I thought that two would go really well together being a sports fan and having the journalism background already and doing being on my school newspaper in high school and then in college and so once I started I really never wanted to go back because I just thought it was it was such a good match combining those two and I covered pretty much a whole range of sports at Penn State and football was really the one I fell in love with. So that's what I've stuck with. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, and, and so I guess at, at your time at Penn State, what really were the highlights for you? I mean, we, we've seen on your LinkedIn that you got to, you got to cover the, uh, the London games. So we'd really love to know what your experience of those were. But in general, what were your, your sort of real highlights at Penn State? I mean, that was a huge highlight, being able to cover the London games. Um, so I went my, was it my senior year, I believe, and we covered two NFL games in London. And that was just the most amazing experience to see how the game differs, um, you know, from obviously growing up watching football games here my whole life and then going to the UK. And I just thought it was really cool. And the fans are so into it. Um, you guys are so much fun, you know, in the, in the stands, in the, in the stadium, it was a really great atmosphere. And I got to interview a lot of, um, a lot of fans in the UK. And I thought that was really cool and getting to see how much the sport is really growing over there. And, um, and then it was, it was so much fun because my first year traveling with the team in 2019 uh, when I was with the Bucks, I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but we got to go to London again. So that was my second time there to see NFL games. So it was, it was very cool. But um, other highlights at Penn State, uh, definitely covering Penn State football and watching the growth from my first year until, you know, winning the Big Ten championship and then just the growth of the team over the years. And so many stars I got to cover who are now in the NFL, Saquon Barkley, um, Mike Isicki, Trace McSorley, um, I mean, Chris Godwin was the was same year as me at Penn State, obviously, Donovan Smith, um, Carl Nassib was a Penn Stater, and then he was there when I first got to the Bucks. Just so, so many uh, great players, and I'm just touching the surface with those. There are so many more. Getting to cover them was really great, and then getting to be involved with a lot of different things at Penn State, different clubs, um, getting to uh, getting to have several different internships, whether it's covering Penn State sports, and one was um, being a sports intern in Pittsburgh uh, for the Post Gazette there, and just 
getting a whole range of different experiences. And then another highlight was being able to work the Super Bowl my senior year. Um, that was the year that the Eagles won and I grew up an Eagles fan. And so that was a really cool experience to be able to be there when they won. And um, so I'm definitely grateful for all the experience, uh, experiences I got while I was in college because it really prepared me for the job I'm in now. I mean, that, that sounds amazing. And, and obviously the, the Super Bowl, you got, you got to um, be involved in that. And you said, uh, you know, that you, you got to enjoy being part of the, the communication stuff for that Super Bowl. So did you pick up anything in particular during that Super Bowl that, that you've kind of taken into your role now with, with Tampa as well? Yeah, it was, it was a different experience because I was on the communication staff instead of doing social, which I'm doing now. So it's more public relations and um, more working with the media, getting credentials prepared, um, different things like that. So different than what I'm doing now. But when I was in college, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do for a team because I always worked on the, on the news side of it. So I always worked for news outlets, media outlets, and I didn't I never worked for a team in college. And then pretty, you know, late into my college career, I decided I wanted to work for a team. And so the Super Bowl experience, which it was me and a couple other students got to work, which it was really, really cool. Um, that, that really helped me decide what I wanted to do because I thought, oh, maybe communications, PR, maybe that is what I want to do. And then I was talking to a bunch of different people there so the communication staff for the Super Bowl is um, it's made up of all different communication staff from every different NFL team. And the Bucks actually weren't there. They were one of the only teams not there. Um, so it's funny that that's who I ended up with. But I got to talk to so many different people and I decided, oh, actually social and digital is more for me. That's what my background in reporting has been. And I used all those skills and, you know, as a reporter today social media is a huge part of that so I really had that experience already just from reporting internships and so getting to talk to different people and you know and I think some people even said you know your background really aligns with more social media and I was like you're right that sounds like something I'd be way more interested in than communications even though that was fun as well um but so that really led me to networking with a bunch of different people I met at the Super Bowl. And so kind of how I got into the Bucks was I, well, that I had interviewed with, I think it was about eight different NFL teams for internships <laughs> coming out of college because I had met all these people there. And so, um, you know, in, in sports, it's, you know, when they get, they're getting hundreds of applications, sometimes thousands. Um, you know, mine stood out because I'd already met a lot of these people and they had worked with me. And the bus actually wasn't one of them that were there at that Super Bowl, but that's the team I ended up with. And, um, and I mean, it all worked out perfectly. <laughs> That's, uh, it's it's great to hear the the sort of evolution of how you've gone from, as you say, through, through Penn State and through that and, and now into the box. I'll hand you over to Alex now. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, first of all, Jill, I'd just like to extend my own welcome to you to our show. Thank you for taking the time to come and chat to Thank us. You. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. So um, you touched briefly already, you said about how your opportunity to become these uh, as intern at the Bucks came about, and that was in January 2018. Uh, of course, you joined, in our opinion, the best team in the NFL. Um, naturally um, and then mm -hmm. after about seven months or so uh, you became the social media coordinator uh, and that's of course the role you're still in and you've been doing ever since can you just tell us a bit how that opportunity came about for you within the Bucks sure so the internship lasted like you said six or seven months and then after my internship ended there weren't any positions available at the Bucks so I was applying elsewhere different NFL teams and then about three weeks after my internship ended, the Bucks gave me a call and said, we have an open position. Are you interested? And it just worked out perfectly. I was in the interview process with different teams and didn't know where I was going to go. And everything just fell into place with the Bucks. And I was really glad because the Bucks have such a great culture and really great people to work with. 
and that's not always easy to find. So I didn't know if I went to another team, would it still be that good? Would the environment be as good as the Bucks? So I was already comfortable with the Bucks, and I was so glad that worked out. And yeah, I've been there ever since, and this will be my fourth season. Fantastic. And I can certainly say from a social media perspective, uh, as what with me and Kieran and in the Twitter account for Bucks UK, we are thrilled that you are still with, with the Bucks and, uh, and working alongside everyone there as well. Um, now, you. but of course, it's not just Twitter that you are responsible for your bucks do have more accounts uh, on social media so facebook instagram uh, tiktok i believe as well um and mm-hmm. what you and your team does on a daily basis creating the content is just superb and it's great to see you interact with what has it been like helping to grow the social media accounts uh, create all the content and uh, something we have to mention which is of course seeing all your work result in one million twitter followers so just well done on that by the way congratulations what a milestone to hit thank you i mean it's a whole team effort we have a ton of people working on our staff not just in social but all the video producers photographers graphic designers it is a whole team effort to make this happen and it's been really cool to be a part of uh, when I got at the bu- when I got to the Bucks, I believe on Instagram we had three hundred thousand something followers, and now we're at one point one million. So to be able to see that growth, and of course mm-hmm. winning the Super Bowl helps, having Tom Brady helps, but I think our team's content is really the biggest factor in that because you could have a Super Bowl winning team with a bunch of superstars, and and you know the content isn't as good. And I just feel like we have such talented people that you know I kind of say like. I'm just like the button pusher. They send me the content and I just, and I post it. Um, but a really cool part of my job that I actually get to film myself is when I get to be out at practice or on the field during game days and be able to take content, film content on my phone and be able to post it immediately. And I think that's a really cool part of it because, you know, we have all the polished content that comes in later on, but being able to give the fans that immediate content right there when it's happening pre-game and we have a 20 minute window to post content and being able to show them what's happening live basically is a really cool part of my job. So, I mean, it's a whole team effort. We have a lot of people working very hard and I am, I'm just really happy to see um, some of their work getting noticed because when the team isn't winning, not as many eyes are on our content. So it's been really nice to see, some recognition i mean not just for me but for everyone on the team so thank you i appreciate that i mean l- last year with covid just on that you know you didn't have that level of access to the field i mean right. how frustrating what can you do about that i know it was very tough we had a limited number of people who got to be on the field on game days so i wasn't on the field once for any game day last season um the year prior i was the past you know the two years prior I was but I was able to be on the field during training camp, which was really nice last year, but we kind of just had to, we kind of had to make it work. We had no other option. So we had to get creative with it. We had to have, we had to have other people helping out. So, so um, Mike Greenberg, who you guys know, he actually helped us out with social media a couple of times on the field during, during games for the away games, he would send us videos from his phone. And I mean, he's here bringing the whole team back, you know, doing all the contracts. He's a huge superstar in the league now. And it's like, he was helping us out on social because we just didn't have the access. And so it was really nice that everyone came together to make sure we still got our content, even though we didn't have the access that we would have in a normal year. Tell you what, my love for Mike Greenberg had just got even bigger than it was. You know, he was, he was all, I thought he was a great man, but after hearing that, I think he's an even better man there. Uh, yeah. just, fan, just fantastic there, Jill. Awesome. Um, so, of course, we got to talk about last season. We can't have you on here and not talk about the Buccaneers Super Bowl winning season. Uh, so a two-part question from me now. So from a, in terms of creating content and from a, uh, a social media perspective, what was it like marketing and promoting, firstly, firstly uh, Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, but also marketing and promoting that Super Bowl winning season? It was a whirlwind, honestly, since both of them got to the Bucks. our world completely changed because now all eyes were on us at all times. Where before we had never made the playoffs since I had been at the Bucks. 
Um, my first season was 2018, as you mentioned earlier, and we had never made the playoffs. And so going from that to now being center of attention, all eyes on us, it was completely different, but we didn't really change anything about what we did. Um, it was more so just that more eyes were on us and our content. Um, but we kept producing the same content that we always have. And it just is getting more attention now. I think that's really the only difference. But being able to experience a Super Bowl winning season and, and all the ups and downs, you know, it wasn't always easy. And being able to just watch the whole journey of this team coming together and then it culminating in the Super Bowl and then having the boat parade and being able to be out there with the team covering that, it was it was just an amazing experience. And the fact that we were able to bring everyone back just makes me so excited for this season too. I mean, one thing that I do have to thank you and your team for on behalf of us all here at Butch UK is, you know, your social media content, you know, what you and your team produced has been our way of following the team during this pandemic. So without that, we wouldn't be able to keep up with the team and keep our support going. So on behalf of all of us, a huge thank you to yourself and your team for all the hard work you do. And we look forward to seeing that more of it in the future. We we really do appreciate that. Um, Just uh, another question, if I may. So, you said about how now there's more eyes being on the social media accounts. And if we think back to those 20, the 2018 season and uh, as, well, yeah, we'll stick that 2018 season just for now. Obviously success wasn't like it was now. What was it like dealing with potentially some of the maybe not so positive comments that came through on social media? Whereas I'm sure compared to now, the whole feel of the but social media must have changed completely. It really has. I mean, from when I first started, it was just, you know, a lot of negative comments. I mean, we always had our hardcore fans like you all and, you know, the the diehard fans, but a lot of it was negative. And I remember when I first started my full-time job with the Bucks, that first week, just reading all of the negative comments, and it was during the off season, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like it was really getting to me. And then I kind of was like, okay, uh, these, these are the people who aren't true Bucks fans. And, uh, you know, we all need to give these people attention, except for sometimes we would, you know, go back and forth a little bit if it was, if it was, you know, all in good fun. But I think um, it's been a complete difference from then until now. And now obviously being Super Bowl champs, you know, most com- most of the comments are good, but there will always be the ones that aren't so good. You know, the people commenting about a uh, win a real ring. Like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> um, and so being able to experience that shift has been really cool because when I first when I first got to the Bucks, you know, everyone was commenting about the uniforms on every post, and I got to experience changing the uniforms and everyone loving them and. Um, a lot of different cool things like that so it's been nice to see I mean we'll always get the the trolls you know commenting negative things but but overall I think we have a really great fan base I think just Tampa is a great community and it extends to the UK and all over the world really and I just think that this fan base is like like a really close tight-knit community and and we just have the best support I feel like Absolutely. Completely agree with you there, Jill. And just a final question from me before I hand back over to Kieran. Um, What can you tell us about you and the social media team's future plans? What can we expect to see uh, from the Buccaneers social media accounts going forward? Well, for one, In the Current is still rolling out. We have the third episode coming out tonight and you'll get to see, you know, continue seeing our journey, you know, to the Super Bowl and you know, all the behind the scenes stuff that you didn't get to see on TV and the players perspectives and, you know, the sit down interviews with them. And, you know, of course, we all saw what happened on the field, but getting to see these behind the scenes stories. And I think especially this third episode um, I had just watched, I think you guys will love it because there were several stories in there that even I didn't know coming from the players. And I just think that's a really cool thing. So keep your eye out for that. And then just all the content coming with, you know, being a Super Bowl, you know, defending Super Bowl champions throughout the season. Like you'll see all the content that you normally do. And I mean, 
hopefully more and hopefully we have another great season and um, some more access and get to keep showing you guys all the behind the scenes um, journey throughout the season. Fantastic. And looking forward to seeing next season's gifts as well, because we do like using those on the Butch UK account, as I'm sure you've seen. So I can't wait for those to come out. And will we see, oh, any, yeah. more, will we see any more Brady and Gronk um, bits this season? Can you tell us about those? You'll, Are we going to see any more? You'll have to see. You'll have to see. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> nothing, has been, nothing has been filmed yet, but it's in the works. Lovely. So I'm, ho I'm hopeful that you'll see some more of that. We'll look forward to that. Jill, thank you so much. That's my question is done. Kieran, back over to you. Thank, thanks, Alex. I'm glad you mentioned Brady and Gronky because that's that's been one of the brilliant moments of the season. It's it's so nice to remember that they're, they're these are human pe beings and they've got feelings and emotions. And the, the one where they read the nasty tweets and yeah, you know, they're just so much fun. It's it's brilliant. And and in the current, like you said, Joe, what's well, a great teaser for to to head over to YouTube and, and the Bucks uh, Buccaneers dot com site to uh, to go and look at that because it's such a high quality production and the behind the scenes stuff really is is unparalleled. Um, so now we've just reached a slight interlude in proceedings where um, we'll do a little bit of club business. Um, for those listening, if you don't know, the Bucks UK uh, is a fan club. Uh, we're not, we don't, you know, what we do here is is for fans everywhere, but but we are specific, particularly a, a fan club. If you are in the UK and you support the Bucks and you're not yet a member, you need to go over to BucksUK.org and click on join and get involved. Uh, we have hundreds of members now. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're closing in on, I think it's 400 we're nearly up to now. So, you know, these are paying annual members. What do they get for that? They get the chance to go and get tickets to go and see the Bucks. And we're finally allowed stateside. Fingers crossed. Please let it happen. Uh, and that, that's really good. We have prize competitions every week. Uh, we have four different fancy football leagues. Uh, we have our forum, which is our website discussion board, where we talk during games. Uh, to put it into, into perspective, so that should Chicago game last year, the one that got away, um, the one that was in the middle of the night, it started at 1am over here, we had 3,000 comments on a thread watching that game, uh, we went through the full gamut of emotions along with yourself Jill and everyone else um, uh, with the team, so get involved, uh, click on our website and do join, follow us on all the social medias, if you're not in the UK we still want to be involved and interact with you so you know join in with social media we do not bite we love to get involved and um we try and reach out and follow back to everyone as well so that's our little bit of club business back to you jill as i said because we are a members club we, we've got some questions that our members were really keen uh, to put to you um i should say there's no accounting for taste um and, and given our range of uh, accents that would have been involved if these people have been asking believe you it's better coming from me um so our <laughs> first one is from steve gargett uh he said do you offer any guidance to the players regarding their personal social media accounts? I do once in a while. It really depends, but some players um, ask for it more than others. I don't really offer it up unless anyone asks, but we like to share their practice photos, game photos with them, any clips that we take. Um, some players are more interested in receiving those pieces of content and being able to post them on their own channels. And some don't really care, which is fine. So I definitely don't push anything, but you know, when they do want help with their social, we are all for helping them because um, it's really great for the fans to be able to see stuff coming directly from them and getting to know the player instead of, instead of us showing you their personalities i mean that's great too but getting to see stuff coming directly from those players it just gives a better perspective so we definitely like sharing their stuff and um yeah whenever whenever they um need any content or direction with social we're always happy to help fantastic you must remember everyone's username and handles off by heart by now uh, and I guess we're lucky compared to some other teams where some players, or should I say some players' wives, clearly um, sometimes need to step away from the, uh, the set submit button. Uh, our next question comes from Pete Payne. Um, he wants to know, how would you advise someone who's interested in a social media content job to get started? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think being able to get experience wherever you can if you're looking to run a brand account or a team account or anything like that, I would just start by um, reaching out, seeing if you can shadow people who already do the job. Networking is huge and just being educated on the field and all the 
new things that are um, coming out, being able to be a quick learner with all of the new platforms, you know, popping up uh, every so often. And I mean, for me, I was lucky enough to get that experience in school um, and be able to do different internships. So if you have that opportunity, that that's the way I did it. And, and that was, I'm a pretty, you know, clear path to get to where I am now. And, um, but you don't have to come from that background to get into it. I mean, if you're in marketing or, you know, business or any, any kind of, you know, field, you could, you know, you could learn these skills and have it relate to what you want to do for, you know, if you want to do social and sports or, you know, for any kind of brand, I would just suggest getting that it, experience and if you can you know if you're young and want to do an internship i think that is a great way to do it or if you want to you know shadow someone who's already doing the job that you're doing and you know and working on your personal account as well and i don't think that's that's a must that you have to do to be in social but i think it it certainly helps and i think that's the way you can meet a lot of other people in the field as well um i feel like i have a whole community of people you know, I know almost like everyone who does social in the NFL for every different team and outside the NFL and in other leagues. And it's a really close community. And I feel like everyone really supports each other. So even getting connected to different people and networking, I think that would be a really great start. Thank you. That's really good advice. And actually, as an aside, I noticed um, we've been followed and had a few comments by someone that shares your surname. Um, do you have, you have a relative on Twitter? Um, who's, I mean, my parents are on Twitter. I think it might be. Is it, is it Nora? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my mom. <laughs> You've been grooming her, have you, over, over the dinner table? Or... Oh my gosh. It's, I, I will hear this from all my friends. Your mom just liked my last 40 <laughs> tweets in a row. You know, like I've come into work and my coworkers say oh your mom just liked all my tweets oh, she goes on like once in a while and likes every single thing on the timeline so i'm glad she's giving you guys some love brilliant too. it's the equivalent of um trying to have a whatsapp conversation where you're staring up their nose or something isn't it yes <laughs> <laughs> um and you said it's a team sport and i think we really that really resonates with us um well, there's a question next from david cambridge who said how many people does it take to coordinate all the areas of the buccaneers social media and it'd be really interesting to hear you know how you divide it up is do you take a, a platform each or do you take a story and go cross platform yeah that is a good question so it's really me and one other person who's doing all the posting but there's so many more people involved like i was saying before all the creative positions so what happens is the producers photographers designers they will send the content to my department so my department is me someone else in social, and then we have um, two people running the website and the app, and then we have staff writers, and we have our VP of the whole department, and so it's a pretty small department that I'm in, about five or six people, but we work with a lot of other departments to, to create the content, and then, and then I post, I would say, more than 90% of what you see on the Bucks accounts on, on all of the channels. But it's, it's a lot of, you know, it's a big team effort to get to that point to where I'm posting. But um, yeah, we, we really work with almost every department in the organization. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, our next uh, penultimate question is from Graham Reed, um, who asked, what would you say has been the greatest achievement for the Buccaneers social media team so far? That's a really great question. I would say, I, I have a few. I don't know about what the number one would be, but I would say reaching a million followers is one of them on Instagram and Twitter. That's definitely one of them. I would say all of our Super Bowl winning content and including Boat Parade in that. Uh, I would say a, like a personal one for me is getting to cover um, Devin White riding his horse around the stadium with the Lombardi Trophy. It was kind of a funny story how it happened. 
on the boat parade, I was on the same boat as Devin and just in casual conversation, I said, oh, is that actually going to happen? Is your horse actually going to come to the stadium? And he said, yes, it's happening today, right after the boat parade. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I told everyone, like, we have to be there to capture this. And he, he let us go. And because um, we didn't want to take away from him. We, it was his moment. We just said, can we be there to capture it? And he was actually going to be the first one to post it on his accounts. But then he said, you guys can post it from the Bucks account. And I thought that was a really great, um, great thing that he let us do because then we got, you know, all the engagement on our posts. And I thought it was, I thought it was a really cool moment. So that was a big accomplishment. And then I think having in the current and Tommy and Gronky, those series have been really great for us as well. So those are just a few off the top of my head. I just, Jill, so I just want to stick with the boat parade ever so quickly because I just need to ask about this event with you. The trophy throw, the throw of the Lombardi trophy. How close were you to it? Was your heart in your mouth? What did you think when you saw it? Did, how quick were you posting it on social media? Just Because <laughs> I can tell you, when we watched, well, saying when I watched it, my heart was in my mouth. I thought, oh my goodness, is this thing going into the water? <laughs> Yeah, well, funny enough, I was on a different boat. It didn't even see it happen in person. So I think the first time I heard about it, I was on, I was, uh, so I was on a boat with um, about, I would say maybe 10 different players. Okay. And we all split up to capture content, um, my whole department on, so we went on all different boats so we could get all the content. Um, I think I first heard about it. I saw a message on my phone or a tweet and someone was talking about it. And that was the first time I heard about it. I'm like, no way that actually happened. And then funny enough, a good friend of mine, Whitney, she actually captured that first video of it and everyone picked it up and she was getting phone calls all day from every news outlet in the country, basically. Can we use this? Can we use this? And I thought that was really cool. So she was the first one to post it. So that's probably the one you saw. And then um, ours came later on. One of our video producers was on Tom's boat and got that close-up one that that you probably saw. So that was a crazy moment. I mean, I wish I saw that in person, but I also would have been so scared. Like you were the first time you watched it. I mean, I just watched that video over and over again, even though I didn't see it in person. Well, Tom had a had a sensible idea and threw it to Cambrai, so we know that was going to always end, end well, thankfully. So our yeah. last question for you, and, and it's, it's a bit of a selfish one, to be honest. This is from Adam Davis, who, who helps run our Instagram and Facebook. He said, do you have any tips for our Bucks UK social media team? I mean, you guys are awesome on social media. You are always engaging with our posts, and you just have the best, I feel like, the best presence on social media um tips would just be honestly keep doing what you're doing and um and continuing to grow your fan base and it sounds like you have a ton of members and you're just continuing to grow and grow and i mean you guys do a really great job and i always feel so so much support from from you all and i know our you know the other bucks fans and bucks employees we're all very you know, grateful for your support. And so the only tips I have would be to, you know, continue posting, um, you know, engaging with our posts, other Bucks fans posts. That's really how you'll keep growing your accounts and, um, you know, interacting with other Bucks fans and even other, other teams and their UK accounts. And I mean, I don't follow many of those, so I don't know if, if every team has one or, you know, but just continue interacting with other fans. And, and I think that just builds a really nice community for you. Thank you. That's really good advice. We, we, we do try to sort of follow everyone back and really, you know, as much as we love to engage with you guys, we, you know, we, we do engage with all the fans as well. Good. And, that, and, we, and that's just where the fun is, you know, even just down things like, you know, getting a retweet from Captain Fear makes my day sometimes, you know, <laughs> things like that. So it's all, it's all good fun. Yeah, so, definitely. So that's everything we had to, to put to you. We, we were aware we've intruded into your afternoon. It's been lovely to sort of hear the voice behind the hashtag uh, and really get to know you. So thank you. Um, I guess, you know, if you've got any sort of final thoughts or anything you'd like to say, you've, you've got the floor now to our, our Bucks UK members. 
Yeah, just thank you for all of your support and always interacting with our posts from the Bucks account and mine for my personal account. I definitely appreciate all the love and support. And um, yeah, you guys are the best fan base. So thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Alex and Mariana as well. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so keep an eye out. Well, the season is, is looming now. Uh, we've still got a few more of these preview clips, but before you know it, the season will roll round. Now, Jill, we know you are super busy during the season, but maybe maybe this time next year or something we can take stock again and uh, and work out how much we've managed to, to grow the uh, grow the uh, buckosphere or whatever the right phrase should be. <laughs> Definitely. I would love to. Thank you, guys. It was great talking to you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone at home, for listening. And we will see you very soon. Goodbye. 